We can never attempt to understand someone else's story. When you see cars abandoned around the world, you can't just assume that they had no intention of coming back for it, or really did just intentionally leave it. But there are certainly some interesting abandoned car stories out there. From a Welsh mine of cars to a Bugatti in a lake, here are 20 most abandoned cars in the world. Number 20. Ferrari F40 the Ferrari F40 is at the top of many Ferrari lovers' wish lists. It was the last Ferrari that received Enzo Ferrari's personal approval and was the most expensive and powerful vehicle when it was made. So when rumors circulated that one was left to rot in the desert when its owner was killed in 2003 by U.S. Air Forces, you can imagine car enthusiasts wanted to seek it out. A YouTuber and Ferrari expert, Rada Rasa, wanted to be the one to find the F40 owned by Uday Hussein, the son of dictator Saddam Hussein. The car had been rotting in the intense desert sun for about two decades and even in terrible shape would fetch a pretty penny. Radarasa tracked down Chris Smith from Gas Monkey Garage to help him find the car. They traced it back to Erbil, the Iraqi Kurdistan capital, and Chris traveled to the area to find the vehicle. He found the location, saw the car, and identified that it was covered in dust, missing the inner coolers, and the engine was also covered in dust. Alongside being in terrible condition, the car would have cost a fortune to transport from Iraq to the UK. A deal wasn't struck, and the car has now been moved to a garage where its current owner decided to try and sell it for $1,150,000. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the star topic. When you got a lot of money, you don't always treat your possessions like they're worth anything. That certainly seems to be the case with the owner of this Lamborghini Aventador, who got it stuck in what looks like gravel or mud. After ending up stuck, the owner just left the car there and walked away, leading to whoever found it next being the proud owner of a nice but stuck expensive car. Why do you think it was abandoned? Was it stolen or did the owner come back for it? Comment down below with the hashtag StarTopic and let us know your opinion in relation to what we just showed on screen. With that said, let's keep things moving. Number 19. Jaguar XJ 2020 any Jaguar lover will be familiar with the luxury vehicle brand's very own heartthrob, the XJ220. Jaguar developed this mid-engine sports car with Tom Walkinshaw Racing, and it was premiered as a concept car in 1988. Approximately 281 were manufactured between 1992 and 1994, making it a pretty rare and desirable car. They had a top speed of 220 miles per hour, and the production version had a V6 twin-turbo engine and rear-wheel drive. They now sell for about $130,000. But that's an XJ220 in good condition. Why you would choose to abandon such a rare and exciting car is beyond me. But one was found with only 900 kilometers on the clock completely abandoned, and it was definitely in a state of disrepair. It was covered in dust and sand with perished tires and a faded paint job. Although all the panels appear to be intact and in good condition. While the circumstances surrounding where and why it was abandoned remain a mystery, we do know that it was found in Dubai and would definitely be a favorite in any car lover's automotive collection. Number 18. Aston Martin DB5 you aren't going to know that a car you're driving now will be valuable in the decades to come. Most people probably regret selling at least one of their cars when it's now worth more than what they could have ever thought was possible. That might be how an incredibly valuable Aston Martin DB5 was left to rot in a mouse-infested barn in Bridge North Shropshire in the UK. It may not have been worth all that much when it was parked up in 1979, but it sure is now. 
The Aston Martin DB5 was only one of 120 made, and this particular vehicle would have only been driven for around eight or fewer years since it wasn't built until 1971. It was then parked up and left untouched for about four decades. It had 60,000 miles on the clock when it was found and wasn't exactly in the best condition. It was infested with moths and mice, but it was repairable. The car also had a striking gold and white interior and a manual gearbox driving up its value to around $230,000. The car was thrust into the spotlight when the former owner passed away, and his brother approached Classic Motor Cars, a restoration company, to see if they wanted to buy it. They, of course, did, and it would be restored and returned to the road where it belongs. Number 17. Shelby Daytona Cobra Coupe. No one had seen or heard of the original Shelby Daytona Cobra Coupe for about 30 years. It was thought to be lost forever, which was devastating since it was the original of only six ever built. The Shelby Daytona Cobra Coupe was an incredibly famous car that Carroll Shelby created to beat Ferrari on its own turf. It won championships, shattered speed records, and then nothing. After the excitement of race wins died away, the original Daytona was sold to a toy car company founder for $4,500, Jim Russell. It then ended up in the possession of music producer Phil Spector, who painted the car's records onto the bodywork with house paint and drove it around LA. After getting an alarming number of tickets while driving it, his lawyers suggested that he get rid of it. As the car had many, many issues by that point, he sold it to his bodyguard, George Brand, for just a thousand bucks. George then gifted the car to his daughter, Donna O'Hara. Rather than treasuring the vehicle and maybe even restoring it to its former glory, she put it in a storage unit in California and paid a storage fee for 30 years. But even after several offers, she never chose to sell it. The car's very creator, Carol Shelby, even visited her with an offer, but she wouldn't even open the door. But with persistence and being in the right place at the right time, she finally sold it for an undisclosed amount to a neurosurgeon who founded the Simeon Automotive Museum, where it sits today. Day. Shockingly, Donna O'Hara willed the money to her own mother, then died by her own hand. Number 16. Ferrari Daytona Barn finds are getting rarer by the day, but they do still happen. A 1969 Ferrari Daytona 365 GTB 4 alloy found in Japan is proof of that. This rare car that is thought to be the only one with an aluminum body was found in a barn in Japan that had been hidden away for the better part of 40 years. Sure, it wasn't in showroom condition, but its rarity made it so desirable that it was put up for auction in Italy and sold for a crazy $2.2 million. It had a little over 36,000 kilometers on the clock, which perhaps made it even more valuable. A few different Italians had owned this Ferrari before it made its way to a Japanese dealership in 1971. It featured in an issue of the Car Graphic magazine and was then owned by Makoto Takai. He kept the car in storage for those four decades and turned down many, many offers to buy it. It was finally put up for sale in 2017. Number 15. Abandoned Welsh Mine Full of Cars What's more exciting than an abandoned car? Well, an entire mine full of them. In 2016, down 200 feet in an abandoned slate mine inside a cave in Ceredigion in Wales, urban explorers discovered 100 car wrecks from the 1970s. The cars hadn't been neatly parked inside the mine, but instead, they had likely been crashed down there because of dangerous roads nearby. Or at least, that's what IT engineer Gregory Rivolet believes after he was one of the explorers to find the many cars. The cars were found in standing water at the base area of the mine. The mine had closed in the 1960s, and the vehicles dated back to the 1970s. Gregory spent four hours exploring the mine and said it was dangerous as the mine was unstable. Slate pieces were falling from above their heads, and they had to use a rope to climb down into the mine. 
He believed that as the roads were wet and slippery in this area, many cars may have ended up down there. Towing cars up and to the nearest town may have also been too expensive, although that's only a theory and he doesn't actually know for sure. The cars were by no means in drivable condition, as you could probably imagine, but it would have been a surreal experience being able to step back in time and see just what used to travel on our roads. Number 14. Mercedes 300 SL Automotive photographer Degler decided to visit Cuba to take photos for his 2015 calendar. He believed there was nowhere quite like Cuba to capture pictures of streetscapes since theirs hadn't changed since the 1950s. A ban on new imported cars spanning decades meant most streets looked like you would walk back in time. That rule has since been relaxed, but Degler decided to visit anyway because he had also heard a rumor that a rare Mercedes 300 SL Gullwing was sitting abandoned somewhere on the Caribbean island. Degler spent about a month traveling 3,000 kilometers and taking about 300,000 footsteps from east to west of Cuba looking for the car. He even asked everyone he had come across whether they had heard the rumor or seen the vehicle for themselves. He continuously came up empty-handed. When he was about to give up, he found it. A Mercedes 300 SL was partially sheltered and obscured by a banana tree. The car now features prominently in his calendar, along with 11 others he had to narrow down from around 25,000 pictures he took on his entire trip. Number 12. Stolen Ferrari Found Buried it wasn't the owner that abandoned a precious Ferrari Dino. Instead, it was the people who stole it. A man purchased the Ferrari Dino for his wife back in the 1970s as a birthday present. Five days later, they went to dinner in the car and came out to find it had been stolen. They reported the car as stolen to the police, but it was never found, so their insurance company paid out. In 1978, children playing around their backyard hit something as they dug up the ground. They flagged down a police officer to take a look and determined that it was something incredibly large. A team came in to dig it up, and it was found to be that very car that had been stolen a few years earlier. As the couple had been paid out, the insurance company auctioned off the car. It ended up in the possession of Brad Howard after he had been negotiating a property deal and decided to buy the car with it. Rumor has it, the original owner had arranged to have the car stolen to collect insurance money, but the people who stole it didn't have the heart to destroy it. To this day, Brad Howard still owns the Ferrari and it has been restored to its original condition. Number 11. Lamborghini Miura P400S The Lamborghini Miura P400S was launched at the Geneva Motor Show in 1966 as one of Italian automobile company Bertoni's first designs. It had a 3.9-liter V12 engine, striking looks, and incredible upgrades like electric windows, air conditioning, a passenger grab handle, ignition switch surrounds, and engraved alloy air vents. Drivers also benefited from bespoke etchings on the steering wheel and eyelashes around the headlamps made of alloy, which sat above a unique shaped grill. This car remains as loved today as it was back then, but there's one yet to be restored to its former glory to match the rest kept in collections under lock and key. It was a barn find with matching engine numbers, and it had been sitting in an underground car park of the Athens Hilton for over four decades. While it requires significant investment to bring it back to life, it was expected to bring in nearly $500,000 at auction. Number 10. Bugatti Type 22 Brescia Roadster It goes to show that no matter how beat up your car is, you can still sell it for a fortune if it's rare enough. That is certainly true in the case of the Bugatti Type 22 Brescia Roadster that sat at the bottom of a lake for over 70 years, then sold for over $550,000. The rare vintage car, which originally had four cylinders and a 1.5 liter engine to help it zip around at up to 100 miles an hour, was recovered from the border of Italy and Switzerland in 2009 after it had been sitting at the bottom of Lake Maggiore for 73 years. Like most things sitting in water for that long, it was riddled with rust. Surprisingly, the man who purchased it didn't even have plans to restore it. The car had been registered to a French address, but ended up in the lake in 1935. 
Watch your foot up, foot up. Apparently, Grand Prix driver Rene Dreyfus had lost the car in 1934 in a drunken game of poker, with Swiss playboy Adelbert Bode taking over ownership. Adelbert had tried to drive into Switzerland with it, but couldn't pay the high import taxes. As the car was worth very little at the time, he told the officials to do what they wanted with it, so they rolled it into the lake. It was rediscovered in 1967 by a diver by the name of Ugo Pion, but it wasn't rescued until a local dive club brought it up in 2009 and intended to sell it to raise money for a charity against youth violence. Number 9. DeLorean DMC-12 There are barns on rural properties all around the world. You mainly presume they house farm machinery and equipment, but sometimes they may just accommodate some of the rarest cars in the world. While the circumstances surrounding the discovery of a DeLorean inside a barn are unknown, a father and son found it in a barn covered in a thick layer of dust after it hadn't been seen for over 30 years. The original owner had racked up about 40,000 miles, but it was parked up in 1986 and never driven again. The door handle was broken, so they used vice grips to pry it open and check out the interior that hadn't been touched or sat in since the 1980s. The pair then returned about a week later with a trailer to take it home, where it would be an excellent company with two other DeLoreans. There were about 9,000 DeLoreans built before 1982, and as of 2007, around 6,500 still exist. These cars are well known for their gullwing doors, fiberglass body, and brushed stainless steel panels. Number 8. 1937 Bugatti Type 57S Adelante most Bugattis are pretty rare and expensive. They were built as luxury cars, and very few people were ever able to get their hands on them. That hasn't really changed today. They are just as rare, if not more so, and just as expensive. So if you were to find a Bugatti tucked away in a garage, it really would be like winning the lottery. Dr. Harold Carr purchased a 1937 Bugatti Type 57S Adelante from the first president of the British Racing Drivers Club, Earl Howe. Earl was the original owner. Harold drove the car for a few years, then put it into storage in around 1960. It wasn't until his death that his family uncovered not only a classic Aston Martin and E-Type Jaguar, but this luxury Bugatti in almost perfect shape and nearly entirely original. It only had a little over 26,000 miles on the clock and was one of only 17 ever built. While the family of Dr. Carr would have undoubtedly made a lot of money on the Aston Martin and Jaguar, they struck the big time with the Bugatti. It was expected to bring in at least $4.35 million at auction. Number 7. Rare Bentley it's not often that a car is as interesting as its owner, but that was true in the case of a rare Bentley and its owner, Charles Blackham. Charles was a Lancaster bomber pilot with the RAF's 550 Squadron who took part in the April 1945 RAF raid of the Eagle's Lair, Adolf Hitler's mountaintop retreat in the Bavarian Alps. Later that year, Charles also participated in Operation Mana, which involved flying as low as 50 feet over Holland to provide food supplies to those who were so hungry they had resorted to eating tulip bulbs. When Charles returned home after the war, he drove his classic Bentley convertible for nearly 40 years before he had to store it and stop driving due to his age. For the next 30 years, it would remain stored away at his Heaton Mercy home before it was finally uncovered after his death at 97 years old. The Bentley turned out to be just one of six like it, and it was covered in rust. All of its leather seats were also ripped and torn. However, even with rust and a poor interior, the car still had an expected value of between $284,000 and $380,000. It ended up selling for twice its estimate at a little over $861,000. Number 6. 1976 Lotus Esprit Elon Musk has a lot of money, over $318 billion to be exact. So parting with nearly a million dollars for a car wouldn't even make a dent. But the car he purchased for $997,000 was undoubtedly one worth buying. Design cars here. 
It all began when a couple purchased an unclaimed storage unit at a blind auction in Long Island. They paid a hundred bucks for it in 1989, which is about $221 in today's money. Under some old blankets in the unit, they uncovered a Lotus Esprit, which had been used in the 1977 James Bond film, The Spy Who Loved Me. In that movie, the car was called Wet Nelly because it could transform into a missile firing submarine from a standard sporty two-seater. The one they had found was one of eight used in the film. As the couple had never seen the movie, they had no idea what they had. It wasn't until they were transporting it that they were informed of its value, so they restored it and auctioned it with Sotheby's. It was sold to a secret buyer identified as Elon Musk in 2013. Elon had plans to upgrade it with a Tesla electric powertrain and his new EV design was influenced by it. Number 5. Fast Nas Car Graveyard about 20 kilometers south of Takfors in Varmland, Sweden, car lovers and photographers are treated to an incredible experience. Here, you will find the Bastnas Car Cemetery, which is a graveyard of cars from the 1940s, 50s, and 60s, spread out on a block of land owned by two brothers who also live there. Rumor has it, the cars belong to the US military, who left them there after World War II. However, that has not been confirmed. Even though the land is private, the brothers don't mind people visiting the cars to take photos. You can visit by car, bike, or hike, and arrive in the town of Takfors by bus from Karlstad. Any trip to the Bas Nas Car Graveyard is memorable, but it's worth keeping in mind that there are rules to abide by when you visit. You can't take anything, disrupt anything, or destroy anything. If you open a car door, you must close it again so that others can view the cars the way they were left there. The brothers have seemingly had problems with thefts, so they've put up a sign that said, For info, after about 30 burglaries this year, I'm fed up with it. I've made traps in the buildings, so if you get hurt or die, I don't care. Remember, in this place, no one can hear you scream. Number 4. Gerard Gombert's Car Collection Gerard Gombert was a rally driver and automotive entrepreneur who spent his entire life surrounded by cars. I mean, he really surrounded himself with cars. He lived in province between Grasse and Fayence Tourette with five dogs, his donkey, and dozens of vehicles of all shapes and sizes in an overgrown garden. To Gerard, though, it was pretty much paradise. His property was essentially an open-air exhibition with every make and model you can think of, like Mini Coopers, Peugeots, Lotuses, Citroëns, Renaults, and more. The vehicles were slowly being reclaimed by nature in some parts of his property and had been haphazardly placed under covers in others. Some cars were unrecognizable under layers of leaves, ripped tarps, and rust. He was judged for his collection, but it was clear Gerard was happy living amongst his cars. His last wish before he died was to bequeath his loot to his neighbor so that it could be sold and some of the proceeds given to the Society for the Protection of Animals. He also wished for his dogs and donkey to be taken care of. Gerard died in 2016, and it didn't take long for his home to be looted of parts, motorcycles, and cars. An auction was then held for his collection, with profits divvied up between the state and distant cousins. Number 3. Sultan of Brunei's Rotting Car Collection Collecting things can be a hobby. Some people collect stamps and others collect unique rocks they find out in nature. But the Sultan of Brunei collects cars, and for seemingly no other reason than to just own them. The collection consists of about 5,000 vehicles and is shrouded in complete mystery. Very few people know what's in the collection except for people lucky enough to be invited to view them as part of a sales agreement. Rumor has it the building they're stored in has no air conditioning, which means that the cars are likely melting and rotting in the extreme heat. Word on the street is that many of these cars also have no miles on the clock, no ownership documentation, and no service history. Apparently, the collection included nine McLaren F1s at one point, which is amazing to think only a hundred were built. The collection also had many of the same cars, along with some made specifically for the Brunei family and others positioned in the garage by color. Some reports state that the Sultan's brother, Prince Jeffrey, spent hundreds of millions of dollars with Rolls-Royce and Ferrari coach builder Pininfarina. Number 2. 1957 Plymouth 
The 1957 Plymouth named Miss Belvedere was once wrapped in a protective plastic liner and entombed in a concrete vault. The goal was to embody optimism for the jet age and reveal the car in perfect condition half a century later, so it would be like stepping back in time. But it was a complete failure. The vault leaked and the protective liner failed. What came out of that vault was a brand new car that was so rusty, a de-rusting service provider said it was like paper mache. Dwight Foster from Ultra One offered to de-rust the car for the winners of it, but it turned out to be quite the undertaking. The frame couldn't be replaced to make the car drivable, so Dwight started a long de-rusting process by spraying it with a de-rusting agent. He spent about $10,000 of his own money doing this, and the car was donated to the historic auto attractions in Roscoe, Illinois. Here, it would be on permanent display in an exhibit focused on the car and the Tulsa time capsule. Number 1. The Bayon Collection Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but even most people with a positive outlook on life would be hard-pressed to see the beauty in old, broken-down cars that have been left to rot for decades. In 2014, 60 cars were found in poor condition owned by French businessman Roger Bayon. Roger had purchased some of the rarest cars known to man with the eventual goal of keeping them in museums for everyone to enjoy. His intentions were good, but Roger ended up in debt and had to sell some of his extensive collection to pay the bills. The rest were strangely forgotten about. They were then discovered many decades later. Even in poor condition, some were expected to sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Two of the 60 vehicles didn't make it to auction as they were in a very poor state, but the rest ended up selling after 15,000 people turned up to view them. And you can see why they did. As rusty and poorly kept as they were, the collection included a 1963 Porsche 356 SC Coupe, a 1960 Facel Excellence, a 1937 Bugatti Type 57, and a 1949 Talbot Lago T26 Grand Sport SWB Sautchik worth close to $700,000. Auction holders had no problem shifting the entire collection. Some of these stories about abandoned cars almost had me crying. These pieces of automotive history to rot away. What would you do if you found a rare or expensive car abandoned? Would you take it or leave it alone? Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.